often time I hear this from my customer that they are using Linux with SSH key pair that is private and public and they somehow are not able to log in because they have misplaced their private key. It is mainly because people use SSH key pair to avoid the password entry, which could be too dangerous. With enterprise scenarios, we can now have Azure Active Directory associated with your Linux VM, which means then you don't have to carry any of these hassles. But having said that, let's say you have the conventional SSH public and private key pair, and you are uh, you are in a situation where you cannot log in anymore to your Linux machine because the private key is misplaced. Let's see what are the possible ways to recover and reset so that you can start working on it again. So I have created a post about it um, today and I want to explain because I couldn't explain a lot more in that post. I will also open up and copy some command which I have mentioned over there. But if you look into that typical problem, the typical problem is to understand the concept of public and private key. So when you use Linux, there is a small utility called SSH keygen. If you just run this command in shell and then follow the instruction, you will probably see the step-by-step -step instruction, which essentially will generate two files. One will hold your private key, another will hold your public key. And using this private and public key combination, you will be able to lock some resource and open only with your private key, okay? So imagine that you are an user sitting somewhere, and then you have a server sitting in a specific location. And inside that server, what you basically store is your public key. So this is accessible to whosoever can have access to this server, can see the public key. So public key is something visible to all of us, as the name suggests. What you hold, and which is very, very private, and you never, ever share that, is the private key. So the private key is only your property, and you have full rights to look into it, use it whenever needed. Now, what happens when you build a server, you place this public key inside the server in some location that is in your home directory, SSH, and uh, there is some accepted keys folder, and you put that key over there. What happens when you put that, the server gets locked by that public key. So if you have seen the, the the press lock lock, which doesn't require any key to lock the lock, you can probably consider this public key as that kind of lock, which can lock by itself. And once it locks, it requires another key that is private key to unlock it. So the private key is the, the main key which you need to unlock this lock. Okay, so it can only be. So that's why we sometimes call it ad, as asymmetric key combination because you have two keys available. Now that's the concept of public private in the SSH TLS kind of scenario. We're not going deeper into TLS, not going to explain a lot more options available in SSH, uh, keygen and other utilities. I would recommend that you go to the open SSL documentation page and read out the document to understand what all possibilities you have over there because this is very very important and core to the linux system now moving on okay so we know understand that now from a very high level perspective let's see from a tools perspective how we can do that so to before i start i want to show you the the azure subscription where i have created an ubuntu virtual machine and this virtual machine can be with you in some other location in your local machine as well as in your virtual hypervisor within windows or somewhere wherever it can be 
Now this Ubuntu machine gives me one thing that is public IP address through which I can access this. So what I can do, I can take this public IP address, okay, copy the public IP address and come to the my bash shell. So you can run any shell and let's say you basically clear it up and if i say ssh and the public ip address i just copied it essentially would let me log into that vm okay so i am now inside that same virtual machine which is created in azure now this is this doesn't ask me to provide any username or password anything of that sort so i'll show you again so if you just come out of that and you just say type SSH. So let me clear it up. If you just type it again and let's say that this is what I typed. You can also type username at the red the IP address. It will let you in. Why it is allowing me to let into that? Two things. Because I have public and private key combination. Now remember the public key stays with the server. The private key stays with you in you know, your laptop or where from wherever you are trying to connect. Now let me show you that. Okay, so if I say CD, you'll find a file called authorized key. So let me show you that list. So you have that authorized keys, right? So there is a file called authorized keys. If I go and carry it inside authorized keys, you see the authorized key is here within this file. So this is a public key which I have put it either manually or through some automation script. Okay, that is clear. So this is within the virtual machine. Now let me come out of that virtual machine and now i am in my local machine okay this is my local laptop where i'm running wsl now at this moment what i wanted to also show you is my ssh keys now let me check the folder yeah all right cd I have this folder and then I say ls. Now you find that there are two files, id underscore rsa and id underscore rsa dot pub. These two can be generated using the SSL keygen utility, which I'm going to show in, in a little later point in time. But let me show you the content within these two files. If I say cat id rsa, it shows you the open SSH private key that's what the header says it's a private key and it's a bit bigger one you can see that the size of it it's bigger because it has a stronger encryption etc so depending on how much you need you can also provide that in the ssh keygen as optional parameter and then it'll generate those complex things now the second thing i'm gonna do is that i'm gonna show you another file called id underscore rsa pub so that's the file now this is the key which you have seen inside the VM, okay? Because these two key got generated locally, so they are all available locally. For safety purpose, you can remove the private key if you don't want that to, to stay with you or with the person who wants to access that. You can remove that, but that's anyways doesn't really matter much. So that's what I mean to say. Now, let me go back to my uh, previous folder and Let's see what all we have. So we have only two, uh, one file and one um, folder is there. That's fine. I want to show you the experience of running the SSL keygen. So if you say SSL keygen, forget about all the other options. If you just simply type that, sorry, SSH keygen, not S, SSH keygen. Now you can see that. It is asking me to replace my private key with this one. Now, if I do that, 
Now, what will happen? First thing, I won't be able to log into the VM anymore because my private key is now is the new private key. And the public key, which is there inside the virtual machine, is something different. So it's not the pair, key pair. Okay. So let me say yes. I can give a different name. I can say yes. Let me do that now. I'll show you that experience. And it's asking me to overwrite. Yes, because it might be too dangerous. The passphrase is optional, so I can just simply ignore that. But you ideally should be able to put the passphrase, and then it will be prompted when you try to log into your Linux VM even through SSH. So it will not be seamless. Now it is generated. Okay. It is generated and replaced. Now I'm going to run this same login command uh, with this IP address. Okay. This same thing here. And I'll see the experience. Now it is saying that permission denied. Why? Because the private key is not no more matching with the public key. Because I created a new pub, pub, private key pub, private key using SSH keygen and it got replaced. And hence it is unable to further login. When I created the Azure virtual machine, I did not even create the username and password. I can do both the options, right? I can have username and password login and SSH both present in my server. But for security guidance, I couldn't do that. And I didn't do it. And hence, I'm not able to do it anymore. Now, there are a couple of ways by which you can make this VM connect again using the same way. One is by using the Azure portal. So let's see that option. Okay, and to before I do that, I will copy the content of the public key in from this newly generated public key, right? So I'll say um, this is probably here. So I'll say this dot ssh slash. So this is the the private key I a public key I have, which is supposed to be inside the virtual machine. Now notice this last four digit. 3z30. Okay. So if we just remember this four digit 3z30, then I open my portal. That is my Azure portal where the VM I created. So this is the Azure experience. Okay. So I have access to Azure portal as a contributor. Hence, I can go change few things in already created virtual machine. So I go to the virtual machine which was created. And one of the things down below under troubleshooting, support and troubleshooting, you have got reset password. The reset password does allow me to reset the SSH public key. Now I can replace the SSH public key with a new key. So let me do that. So you can give any username. So I can say uh, guest. And what will happen to this username? It will get a sudo access. That means it will be an admin and do all the things. So make sure that you do not have space after the public key. So at the end of the public key, generally there is a space. So you should ignore that space and copy only till the last character. Okay. So it is done. So this is not a not a right one. So reserve. So let me put my name only. Okay. And then update. Now this will run an update in Azure portal. And you can see that it will say that is setting SSH key. And once this notification is kind of done with, then I should be able to log in again to the virtual machine using the same way as I was doing earlier. Because now the local machine from where I'm running SSH has the same public private combination, right? So I have the public key in VM. And I have a private key in my local machine. So let's see. So if I go here and I clear it up and I go to SSH, I log in again. You see that I don't see any problem. Now that's what you can do even through Azure CLI. And I have written a small blog post about it. Let me also show you that in a moment. So let me open a dev dot and I log in. Let me 
this is not going to be complicated. Yeah, so I can go into that reconfigure SSH key. I have actually did try to explain that on a very fast forward manner. But one thing additionally you will find over here is that an ability to push the public key from your local machine so to Azure any moment you regenerate the key pair. Okay. If you have access to Azure subscription again, that's something which you need to keep remembering that you need, should have the contributor access to be able to modify the existing VM. Now, if I show you that in a, let's say I put it in a notepad. Okay. And then if you see that, I'm, what I'm trying to do is that I'm trying to update a resource group and I'll put the right resource group name and I'm trying to update a VM. I'll also mention the right VM name. And then what I'm trying to do is that I'm trying to create a new user and then pass on the ID RSA. Now this ID RSA gets generated an ID underscore RSA dot pub and ID underscore RSA. These two files get generated from wherever you run SSH dash keygen key utility. So that is very local. So you need to place it properly in the proper location to be able to have the default behavior. If you want to explicitly provide the private key of your own from a different path, you need to provide in the SSH command. You can do that. You can provide the full path of the file and then it will start pointing to that. Otherwise, it will always pick up from this location for private key. OK, so you can run this command where it says that AZCLI VM user update and whatever resource group your VM belongs to and whatever name of that VM is, you create a new, add a new username, okay, basically. Or you can update an existing username. So for example, if you want to update the same user like Reju, you can update that, you can give a new user. And then you provide the newly generated public key, which will go to the, to the VM, inside the VM and have that. So if you see over here, I say CD. Authorized keys. You see that now this holds probably two keys. Okay. And because I have generated once and then I have added, so it keeps adding. So you can see that it starts with SSH RSA. And there is one more key SSH RSA appended one after another. And you can see that it is having that 3Z30. That's a second key. So if I generate one more, it'll add it again into this list of this. So this is within the VM where my public key resides. And in my local machine, I have the pub, uh, private key. And if I change my machine and use my colleague's machine, which doesn't have my keys, so I will run the SSH keygen in that machine and use that private key to connect to this VM. But before that, in the VM, I need to push my public key to this same file by either using Azure portal or by using the AZ CLI command, that is AZ VM user update, and then update with the uh, new uh, public key. So you hope this is a bit complex in terms of having a clarity about what we are trying to do if you don't come from hardcore linux background if you are like me who mostly spend time on windows i wanted to share my experience and things which i'm seeing with my customer who are asking me these kind of questions quite frequently because they are facing the similar challenges so i thought of building something which might be a useful one going forward so thank you very much for watching and have a great evening.